Hello, welcome to another part of the Intellisaurus assembly video. We are got our robot ready, all the electronics are on it, the, the legs are on it. We're gonna now add the shell parts and start allowing this thing to walk around. All you really have to put on is the head and tail to make it walk, so it needs those for counterbalancing. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the leg parts because the head and tail is the hardest part to put on anyway. Um, for the head, we need a, um, one of our round horns attached to this spot on the head right here. Um, and there's holes already there. I am gonna use these, our, again, our little short M2 screws, our little short M2 six mil screws, and I'm gonna self-thread self into the horn that way. Right? It's a little more difficult that way, but it's just the best way that works. All right, I'm gonna line that up with the hole I want and then I'm gonna force it in. Self-tapping into the plastics. So I have used these two top bolt holes to bolt through and self-tap on the plastic. You can see I've got two holes down there in the bottom. They're just unreachable, um, just bad design on my part. Um, you know, something I could fix in the future. I'd just have to open up this part of the, of the, the dinosaur, and I just didn't want to do that. And two seems to be plenty strong enough to hold his head on. All right, so let's go ahead and put that head on. So now that's the front of the robot. This is the um, motor we're going to attach to. So I'm going to kind of move this up in here. It's a little bit tight. And since I was just trimming the motors, this motor should be facing straight. So I've just got it fit on there. So the head is facing straight forward. There we go. All right, now we're gonna build the tail. First thing we're gonna do is assemble the tail and then we'll attach it. So the tail uses two M2 by 25 mil long for these two sections, and then one M3 by 35 mil long. These are the only odd size bolts in the whole robot, but just kind of worked out that that was the best for the tail. Again, you could put blue Loctite on these nuts if you wanted um, at this spot. I even had these work off, but I want it kind of loose so the whale, the tail wiggles. The M3 by 35 millimeter bolt actually goes in from the top. So this slides over. Nut on the bottom. All right, so I got that nut down in there. I'm just gonna tighten it, but not too tight. Again, you could put blue Loctite on these. I used a nylon nut so it doesn't come off as easy, but I want it loose. Get a little tight there. I'm gonna back it off. There we go. Want it nice and wiggly. I'm gonna use um, this is good old wire wrap wire, very fine wire. I find this easier to use. You could use string. You could use anything. It's um, um, I find string is harder to get taut and even, but if you're better with string, use that. It doesn't really matter. There's not a whole lot of force pulled on this, just enough to move the tail from side to side. So I'm going to first thread this through. There's little guide holes in each piece. And the last piece it's just a tie-off guide hole. So I like the wire because now I can just kind of twist this off. It's a little easier, I think, I think, than tying a knot, but you could really do it either way. Now I'm going to pull this wire 
so that it's reasonably straight. And run it through the last hole on my straight horn. I'm not going to twist that yet. I'm going to do the other wire so I can balance these two wires. I want to. All right, so now we're going to do this side. I'm going to start the other direction just for variation. So now I've, I've got the wire coming down through, tied off at the end of my tail, up through each of the little hole, guide holes in the tail, and I'm going to go ahead and tie it off. I've got my motor um, horn going straight left and right, um, and the tail going straight back. Right, so, the, so my two lines are balanced. I'm going to pull them, each one, a little bit taut so that they're even. It takes a little finagling to get it right. That's why I like the wire is I can kind of get it right. And then once I like it, I can twist these or tie the knot. All right, now I've got the head and the tail on. Um, he should walk fine at this point. We can actually try that out. So I'm going to set him on the table, turn him on, and just press the forward button. Just a simple walk test. You can see him leaning from side to side. He's doing pretty good. All right. I'm going to press OK to stop. Maybe I'll press backwards to see how he walks backwards. Looks good. All right, so let's push, finish putting the rest of the shell parts on. We're going to use these um, true, actual self-tapping screws that come with the servos. Um, I think these are too long to mount the servos, so I don't really like using them to mount the servos, but I think they're great for mounting these body parts, and we need a dozen of them. All right, so these screws mount from the back side, so often you're going to be sort of feeding the screw through um, the robot in an odd angle. So for this piece, there's a hole there, and uh, this piece mounts, goes inside one of these holes there as a guide hole. piece goes there. You'll notice that these this this piece lines up with this hole here and this lines up with that hole down there. If you can't find these holes that line up right, then you probably put the right piece on the left side and the left piece on the right side because then the holes would be slightly different rotation. All right, so that's it. For those leg parts, we're going to do the, um, the bottom leg parts. I'll do the front first. So this piece goes on here. And the screw comes in from the back. Okay, so there's all the leg parts. Now for the um, back shell, the first thing we're going to do is insert this uh, sensor here that we've kind of let flopping around and it just rests in there so I'm gonna kind of tilt it bend this thing back a little bit All right don't bend it so far back that it touches these um, connectors back there it'll short those out that would be bad all right now I've got it up in there I'm gonna bend it up just slightly 
so it rests in there. So now you can see the sensor, that's the actual sensor poking out through the top of the back and it kind of rests in the groove back there. It's just resting in there, but it'll hold. And then on the front, to pop the shell, the, the front just slips over this um, bracket for the um, Raspberry Pi and sits in the back. And that's it. He's fully assembled and ready for walking. Let's turn him on. Set him out front there. And I have my controller. So um, the, the number pad right now just moves his head. So if I move the, the two, it goes down. The head goes up and left and right. Um, the buttons to the side do the tail. Right. Um, we've already talked about the pound and star special for trimming. The um, forward, the up arrow just walks forward. The down arrow walks backwards, and the left and right will turn in two direct in both directions. Right. So if I go forward, he'll walk forward. If I press OK, the center button, he'll stop. Um, the only sensor. Uh, it's important this little sensor on the front that we mounted is our distance sensor. If that senses the edge of the, that there's nothing in front of it, so in this case I got him on the edge of the table, he won't walk forward, right? So that way he won't walk off the front of the table, right? That's the whole idea of that sensor, just to keep you from accidentally walking off the table. Um, that is a distance sensor. Um, it's an IR sensor. Sometimes I have trouble with that sensor on like a glass tabletop or something. It, never, it can't sense that there's anything there so it won't walk. If you're really having trouble with that, um, disconnect the positive on the sensor. Just come down to this, to the red, uh, the red line there and pull the red line out, right? Kind of leave it floating. That'll leave um, this sensor grounded out. Um, with that sensor grounded, through the signal, it'll think there's always something there. So that's kind of a little trick. If you, I've had that trouble on glass countertops or things like that. Now the problem, I pulled that out, he'll walk right off the end of the table. So now you gotta be careful with that. All right. So there we go. That you have fully assembled your walking Intellisaurus robot. I'm gonna do one more video to put the um, Raspberry Pi onto this robot so you can do some artificial intelligence stuff with it. So we're gonna keep going with the Raspberry Pi video.